BBC Radio 4 News. Now it's time for You and Yours with Peter White and Liz Barclay. Hello and well, and the debate about the sell-off of playing fields continues. We travel to Dorset to hear about the fight to turn one disused piece of land into sports grounds instead of a housing development. Playing fields, or rather the lack of them, was the subject of last week's Call You and Yours, and the phones were red hot. The Sports Minister, Richard Caborn, said on the programme that while there might be fewer green sports fields, there had been an increase in the number of all-weather pitches. Stuart Morris from the island of Portland in Dorset told us about the situation there. A number of all-weather facilities have been lost, and one of the few remaining pitches is to have houses built on it, right next door to a site that's being redeveloped for the 2012 Olympics. So, we sent Fiona Clampin to meet him. Well, this is the playing field, which is one of several left by the Navy when the Navy uh, left Portland in 1996. It was used uh, quite extensively by the Navy and by the local community, but it is one of the very, very few flat areas of land in this part of Portland. Stuart Morris was born on Portland, and he can remember a time when the sporting facilities on the island were a lot better than they are now. One of them was a, a very high quality sports pitch with flood lighting or weather surfacing. And that went? That has been destroyed, which is the same with um, two other pitches as well. There is virtually nothing else. There's no other civilian sports facility in this part of Port. It's a pretty sorry sight now, isn't it, with a couple of disused tennis courts on our left and a green space in front of us, surrounded by a rather forbidding-looking wire fence. So this is going to be redeveloped for housing. How many houses are going to be built here, Stuart? I understand the original plan is, was for about 50 houses here um, on nearly two-thirds of this site, which is all part of the Osprey Key development. Part of that development is the Weymouth and Portland Sailing Academy, which is now the National Sailing Academy. And this is where the sailing events in the 2012 Olympics are going to be held? Yes, they didn't know that when they started off, when they started this development. So that is a new factor which wasn't on the scene when the uh, overall plan for this area was drawn up. It certainly does seem a shame that with all the other positive aspects of the Olympics coming here that we couldn't be left with another a legacy which is for the local community people who may or may not be interested in sailing but who just need a sports field for recreation there are two schools in the area neither of those have any meaningful playing facilities no no playing field as such here we have a facility which hasn't been available to them in the past because it was uh, ministry of defense if this facility were to be available for the community and, and the sports field saved, I'm sure it would be a great asset for those children there. It's got everything going for it. So why not save it for Portland and, and this part of Portland in particular? I've come now to one of the schools that Stuart Morris mentioned, Brackenbury Infant School, where there are very few facilities for sport, just a rather lumpy patch of grass where I'm standing now, which is about a quarter of a size of a football pitch. Zoe Green, you're the head teacher here. What kind of sports can you play? We have huge difficulty playing any form of sport on it. It's not suitable for football because as soon as a child kicks a ball, it goes into a neighbour's garden or out onto the road. <laughs> We can't play rounders on it because if a child hits a ball remotely hard, it'll do exactly the same as a football would. So we feel very frustrated that uh, we can't develop our children's sport as we would like to. So what do they do for sport at the moment? We play football, we play a little bit of cricket on this field, but it's very, very restricted. And we do have a, have a sports day, but parents constantly complain that we can't have a, a competitive sports day that they would like because we just haven't got the, the space to do it. So everything is just all very cramped. With us is Alan McKechn, who's the head of Underhill Juniors, which is just up the road from here. Alan, I understand the problem is even worse at your school. It is. We don't have a field at all in our school, and we've just got hard play areas. So we actually come here to use this uh, <laughs> this space which Zoe has described. How feasible is it to use other facilities on Portland? Well, the, the problem is is the cost of transport. It costs us nearly a hundred pounds just to hire a coach, and we just can't afford that sort of cost every week 
to transport our children. It's not only the teachers who'd appreciate a larger field, the pupils would quite like one too. If there was a bigger field, I would be much more happy. Why is that then? Because there's lots more space to run around. We would play school games like have a big circle so we can play games like Farmers is Den, like stuff like that. Because if we try and do it now, there's not enough room for all of us. How serious is it for you not to have a sports field? We overcompensate, I think, for not having a field by developing activities in the hall. But the sort of children that we have need to be outside in an open space. It's absolutely critical for these young children. They have the potential, all of them, to be uh, very good at some form of games and we want our children to develop physically and develop skills and learn games that they will enjoy as adults and we can't do that. There are plans though to amalgamate the two schools and the site down at Osprey Quay is one that really appeals to both Zoe and Alan. We see this as a real opportunity for the schools that will provide our children with the facilities that they desperately need. This is a very time-limited opportunity that we've got, but it would be just the most wonderful legacy from the Olympics. Our school has got a fantastic view. If you, you come there and you look over Chesil Beach and everybody, all the visitors who come say it's wonderful, but we would swap that wonderful view for a nice big playing field. Well, we contacted the South West Development Agency, which is responsible for the development. They didn't give us an interview, but told us there are no plans to get rid of the soccer pitch, which will be improved. The disused tennis courts will be turned into a brand new fully equipped play area for young children. And the agency has also invested in the local sports centre. The remaining land will be developed to provide 50 to 60 affordable and family houses to address local housing needs. We consulted with Sport England in developing the site. 